Hi guys and welcome back to More Than Cars YouTube. This was very unexpected today but I've been handed the keys and I'm in an Aston Martin DBX. Yes, the 4x4. This is actually a road test so I'm allowed to take this out on my own um, and basically have a go. I didn't realise I was actually going to be allowed to take it out on my own so I hadn't actually bought the camera mount so I'm going to uh, attempt to do a little bit of filming. My wife's going to hold the camera so excuse it might be a little bit wobblier than usual but we're going to take it to uh, the uh, well some country roads give it a blast and I'm going to let you know my thoughts on the Aston Martin DBX. Let's spin the camera around because this spec is slightly nicer than the one in the showroom or in my opinion I, I'm actually quite a big fan of this spec. I rather do like it. I'll do the outside in a minute but effectively it's green with no carbon bits um, but the interior is this cream and I think it's a black leather but with a kind of cream stitch. Really nice, uh, dash is already very lovely, it's the first time I've actually seen the dash, let's give that a zoom, come on camera, focus. Come on, focus. There we go. Really clean, really crisp. Uh, a lot more buttons in this than the standard Vantage. Loads and loads of buttons here, loads of buttons here. Um, and mode selection is now done solely on these two um, bits here, what I've been told to have a play with. I have actually been told this is a pre-production, so the DAB radio isn't actually working and uh, I don't think NAV is working particularly well, so uh, I've been told definitely don't play with those bits, uh, but do select the different modes, see what the driving characteristics are like, that is uh, definitely what I'm going to be doing. But yeah, really like this spec, kind of the black and cream, very nice. Let's get it out uh, and uh, see what I think. Driven it for about two seconds so far. We're just going along a road next to Mini, so uh, <laughs> hand holding the camera. Hopefully, it's coming out all right. Um, yeah, it's all right. It's got plenty of poke. That is my initial thought. I'm obviously in comfort mode, so it is very soft. Uh, surprisingly, uh, surprisingly nimble. I was expecting it to be slightly more wallowy, especially in comfort mode, but it, but it isn't. It's definitely, you can tell it's definitely a sports focused 4x4. Um, I mean, I've driven it for 30 seconds, so I don't want to give too much impression at the moment. Uh, come back in five minutes and uh, I'll let you know. The first thing I've noticed when clicking through the modes buttons, there's a lot of modes. So we have Terrain, GT, Individual, Sport and Sport Plus. Sport Plus seems to be the same as kind of track mode in um, say the Vantage or the DBS, even though the DBS doesn't actually have uh, track mode, it has Sport Plus the same, but that's effectively what it's doing because it's turning off traction. So that's, that's my initial thought, lots of modes. I can definitely feel what the car's doing, so it's definitely more responsive in the more all kind of sporty modes. I'm going to leave it in sport for a bit and tell what it's doing. I can't tell that much if it's altering the suspension yet, but we haven't actually uh, gone around any corners properly yet, or, or actually gone faster than 30 miles an hour as we are stuck in traffic. But um, definitely a lot of modes, um, an awful lot of buttons on the steering wheel. It's, uh, I imagine you'll obviously get used to it, but as a normal uh, Aston owner, it's not necessarily as intuitive as uh, the other ones as yet, but definitely a comfortable ride. Um, you can't feel any bumps whatsoever, so but um, you can definitely tell that the suspension isn't soft and wallowy. It um, feels feels very similar so far to the standard Vantage. I'm going to say. Um, mainly because it's got the same powertrain, so kind of used to the same kind of uh, response from the engine, really. Okay, so I've just done a little bit of hard acceleration. Um, you can tell it's got the same powertrain as the, the Vantage, even though it's slightly... Um uh, I'm, I'm going to say it, it, it obviously is slower, it's a lot, lot heavier car. Um, obviously similar power delivery, um, the noise is very much the same, so obviously once you're in Sport or Sport Plus it's clearly opening those valves up and allowing them to pop and bang. Even though it's very, very quiet in here, but dropping the old windows down, it is clearly making the same noise as the Vantage, same engine, it, it's going to. One thing I'm not quite sure about at the moment is it does seem to rise and drop when I hard accelerate. I was expecting some form of active damper to kind of stop that, similar to the Urus, basically, and it's not doing that. Now, I don't know if that's me at the moment not knowing how to alter the damper settings or 
it's basically not aiming to be as hard a ride um, as potentially the Eurus in like its obviously sport setting. Um, that's my initial impressions after five, ten minutes and uh, initial whack on the old accelerator, but it uh, definitely is quick enough. Uh, actually, I need to disregard my last statement. I've uh, just tried hard accelerating in the different modes. It has definitely got active dampers in the sense of uh, it's not allowing the suspension to travel as much um, when you're in a sportier setting, what's good. Um, it's still reasonably comfortable though. I, I'm gonna ask the question later of how much is it actually damping because uh, I'm, I'm kind of comparing this to an a, a, a Eurus. Um, I don't know whether, obviously this is not meant to be a Eurus, this is really aimed at the, I think it's the Porsche Cayenne or Cayenne, the, the little Porsche 4x4. Um, my initial impressions are, yes, I like it, it's certainly quick enough, it's very comfortable um, and it does make a noise when you want it to be. Um, I'm going to leave it in GT mode because I think clearly this is, this is the market it's aimed for, it's not aimed at, at that sport hooligan market. Um, I like it. I do genuinely like it, very nice, you can still tell what the car is doing, under steering, it accelerates when you want it to, it shifts down reasonably quickly, um, and it's it makes a noise when you want it to. Yeah, I like it, very much so. Well, I've just taken um, the car along kind of a back road uh, and managed to give it a little bit of beans. Um, yeah, so my impressions is pretty much the same as they were uh, initially. It's definitely quick enough. It's definitely aimed at the comfy end of the market, even though you can tell it's not like a Range Rover. I, I imagine probably the best or the most like car I've ever driven like this, I would say is the BMW M5. Now I've never driven a Porsche, and oddly enough, there's one KN just past us. I've never driven a Porsche KN, but I imagine it drives pretty much the same as that. It's sporty enough, but nowhere near kind of Eurus sportiness, if that makes sense. And it's all really to do with the, um, the way the suspension is acting, I will say. Uh, if they stiffened up that suspension, then I would say it would definitely compete with the Eurus feel. It's definitely, you can tell it's changed when you're changing through the modes, you can definitely tell that Sport is giving you a sportier feel, but it's not to the extreme of a Eurus. It is definitely, like a BMW X5M is, the, is definitely the closest thing, um, even though I will say this drives better than that. I can definitely tell what the car is doing more than an X5M. An X5M just feels like any other BMW and the steering doesn't necessarily feel as nice, where this does definitely feel nice. You can tell what the car is doing, but it, it does still have that comfy, uh, atmosphere rather than a hard sports car. At the end of the day, this is not designed to be a sports car. It's not de designed to be a Eurus. It is designed at that market of Porsche Cayenne, BMW X5Ms. Um, I'm going to say possibly a Range Rover Sport, even though I'll say this feels sportier than a Range Rover Sport. I like it, very much like it, and it's nice and quiet. But again, when you do floor it, you do get a pop and a bang. I like it. I really, what do you think? Do you like it? I like it. There we go. Verdict from the wife is she likes it. So we're going to accelerate hard, flooring it, drops down. Sounds good. And then we get a crack and a bang when we uh, let off the accelerator. Um, but you can kind of tell with the, uh, even in the hardest setting, it, the vehicle is still doing that. What a Eurus doesn't. Um, I don't know why I keep referring to a Eurus. I don't actually want a Eurus, even though I was very impressed with that car when I drove it on Imola track out in uh, Italy. But um, yeah, so far, very impressed with this thing. Really like the interior spec of this. Um, and obviously mine should be arriving probably within a month or two now. So uh, this is definitely a thumbs up from me. I definitely think Aston Martin will do very well with this car. Really comfortable, like the kind of infotainment dash area. Um, this screen is vastly improved from the other Aston Martins of late. And um, 
yeah very comfortable i don't necessarily like the perfectly round steering wheel however this is me coming from the other astons what are obviously the sports end of the market but definitely this is going to be something that you could really quite comfortably cruise around for several hundred miles and get out of the car feeling nice and relaxed yet yeah, if you wanted to enjoy a country road you definitely could so this is a thumbs up from more than cars definitely approve of the Aston Martin DBX. Well, I can't drive it and not show you the outside. So it's in kind of a dark green color. I'm not sure if that's coming off on camera. We have no carbon bits whatsoever. If you can remember the side profile, let's shut the door, of the last one. We had all sorts of carbon bits here and on the bonnet and all sorts, very similar to how I'd spec mine. However, this one hasn't. And I, I really hope it's coming out because it is not particularly sunny and it's a very dark colour. We have the gold kind of trim alloys that I, I really actually dislike these uh, very much so, but the actual overall spec is, is quite pleasing, quite subtle, um, and uh, the, obvious, the old Aston Martin grille on the front. And I actually really like the looks of these. These do not come out very well on camera whatsoever. So uh, let's have a little look inside, as you can see from a little bit better distance, the contrasting inside of cream, black, and green. It actually really works. Not a fan of this wood. I realize they've made such a big thing about this because this is all carved out of one piece. Really nice to, as a talking point, but visually I'm very much uh, prefer the kind of younger looking um, kind of aluminium or carbon uh, for, for me. But um, yeah, some people will obviously look, much prefer that being kind of a traditional Aston Martin, yet wanting a capable four by four. Um, boots obviously big, I've showed you that last time, but the, be the best bit is have to be the back. I mean that you are be going to be able to take passengers. After driving it now, I can categorically say this is definitely aimed at a comfy, but comfy, performance end of the market and they're going to travel very very nicely in the back of this uh, plenty of leg room really comfortable uh, and the actual ride in this is really really good um, overall i'm very impressed with this car um, i can't wait for mine to arrive I hope that that's given you a vague insight of what it's like to drive an Aston Martin DBX. I realise I've not had it very long, I've only driven it for probably 15-20 minutes, um, but definitely enjoyable, um, definitely not at the Eurus end of the market, but it is no slow coach whatsoever. Uh, it certainly makes a very pleasing noise from the uh, single tipped exhaust on either side of this. Um, uh, yeah, very very fast, very comfortable. Um, for me, I, it's not quite as hard in the proper up-end sportier settings as I would like. I'm going to see if um, there's, if that is still part of pre-production or if that is genuine. But actually, if you're looking for a 4x4 to take some kids around or just you want a really nice, luxurious 4x4, this is definitely up your market. I'm really impressed with this. I'm actually impressed with how much performance it has got um, considering the weight of it and the fact that it's still got that same 4-litre engine from the, the new Vantage. Really, really do like this. Cannot wait for mine to arrive. Uh, and thank you for watching. So if you haven't subscribed to the More Than Cars YouTube channel already, please do so. It does mean a lot. Give this video a thumbs up. If you've got any questions about the DBX, get them in the comments below because I can always ask Ollie, my dealer. Um, so again, thanks very much and I'll see you again tomorrow for another silly video. Bye guys, take care.